Welcome to the bold analysis, ladies and gentlemen. The judiciary will have uh, with either have to develop or kill this country. And I'm making this statement in respect to Okia Omtata um, petition where a high court judge um, issued some conservatory orders um, against the just passed uh, the finance bill that President um, that William Ruto assented to bill um, last week or rather, yeah, last week. And I've uh, taken the grounds, you know, I've, I've not been uh, doing videos, so I've not been following, so I really took time to go through what exactly was the contents of that and um, the reaction of Kenya Kwanzaa because I mean, I was equally shocked on uh, courts making that. But I want to tell you that um, that petition has been hijacked. And then Okia Mtata went to court with other four litigants who are representing, I think, civil society organizations or just Kenyans of goodwill. And so I, I want us to look into this and you will find out that the state is hijacking that Okia Omtata petition, and clearly they've been found off guard. Um, if not just um, an inside game. That petition laid grounds for suspending the, uh, the grounds of suspending the finance bill and relooking at the litigants' uh, arguments, or rather Okia Omtata's arguments, he is very precise and clear on the illegality, on the logic, and the legal arguments. It's, it's legal that borders logic. And that court looks at the legal, but in politics, it is the logic that will then uh, come out more clear. I've looked at these two grounds. One, according to Senator Omtata, forcing people to contribute to a housing, a housing scheme that they do not want is a violation of Article 36 of the Constitution since it is disguised as a means of property ownership when it is an avenue the government wants to use to reduce people's earnings. That's what Kim Tata is saying. He continues to say, the introduction of this levy means that the gross salaries of the employees will be, uh, will be subjected to further deductions which impact on their net take-home income. It will, interfere, it will interfere with the net salaries and constitutional office holders which makes it all unconstitutional. That's one of his arguments and that is especially on the housing fund. Number two is what I want us to look at. Huh? Um, Okiom Tata argued that um, the finance bill had needed an input from the Senate, but um, because some provisions there were affecting, is actually affecting Senate, he's saying that the finance bill, the provisions of finance bill that affect Senate, but the Senate Speaker, or rather the Senate, was not involved or not consulted on the whole of this. And he referred to a letter because Kingi wrote a letter to the Speaker of the National Assembly um, on May 3rd, uh, speaking about the input of the Senate in respect to it. That the provisions in the finance bill that affects, that are affecting Senate, uh, the, the counties, should also uh, be considered in the Senate. And he requested Moses Wetangula on it. Now, after Okia Omtata raised the questions that the Senate was not involved, then uh, Kingi is giving us a very interesting tweet. He's arguing that he wrote a letter to the Speaker of the National Assembly withdrawing the dated 15th June warning that the Finance Bill Act would affect the county governments and needed to be discussed by both houses. Now, on 15th June, he said that it is affecting county governments and needed to be discussed by both houses. Now, 
after okia mtata went to court he is now coming back to say that he did not that he had withdrawn that letter <laughs> you know according, <coughs> according to the court document seen on sunday uh, seen by this article king maintained that the act does not affect the county governments as alleged and was advised to withdraw the letter illegally obtained and filed as evidence to mislead the court so after the court gave an injunction king is now coming back to make a u turn and say that he withdrew that left after he was advised i'm like <laughs> well i'm telling you state was caught off guard on this one even if they they're looking for evidence to win the case but then this is an orthodox way of doing it he argued that the court erred in issuing conservatory orders against the finance bill granting omtata's prayers or barring william brutus from enforcing the tax hikes uh and he's saying i do not acknowledge that you indeed wrote to me with regard to the consideration of finance bill <laughs> act my letter dated 15 june 20, 2023 was therefore sent in error and i hereby withdraw it and repudiate it its content in its entirety now on that i saying the decision is not a speaker's decision the speaker must show that that withdrawal is something that he did with under the speaker's counsel so <laughs> it's what is it that um king is now writing saying that i withdrew the letter that but initially he was part of the complaints that uh very well that uh, um, housing fund or uh, rather the finance bill is affecting counties and also needed to be discussed in the senate now um that's a bit of it but i want us to make it i want us to move further uh, a little bit ahead and look at I want us to listen to Alice Ohome and Dindi Nyoro reacting to this court decision in 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 uh, while, while speaking in Moranga because it paints a picture and you know I'm I'm shocked at how they profiled the litigants and even probably the judicial staff the judiciary staff that gave these orders. I want us to get to that sound bite but before that sound bite I would want to remind us and um, just take a second to remind us about um, the last expense to support Sarah that I'm been reaching out to you in a special way I know this is a matter that has been so much close to me because I've been around um, we fundraised 1.3 million last year to support a lady uh, who is a member of this channel known as Sarah Tieno and uh, Sarah had uh, been diagnosed by acute leukemia but um, at the end of it we thought and we really prayed and believed that uh, she was going to be well yes uh, she was out of the hospital but was still going on with the chemo i know quite a number of members of this channel still hung on um some of us still hung on and she went through the chemo but uh, unfortunately we lost sara last month on 26th at kenyatta hospital uh, she rested there after long really battle with the acute leukemia and of course i reached out to you that we started and uh, the bit of a wound because of the bills and the expense that is needed and i will just get back that let support my only really is to help the body to get home and also bit of welfare of the boy that has remained because he had uh, one child and so still things are still thick and i will still ask you to support i've put my number there um kevin odur plus 2 plus 2540710627889 i've realized that many people missed the last bit so it's 10627889 and i'm just so grateful for those who are already responding the burial is on 15th and i believe we'll get some few members here who shall also tag along in siaya <coughs> now um back to this i think it's one of the most difficult transitions to make because it takes the spirit no now um i want us to listen to that sound bite of um uh, of the of the mp of, of uh, nyoro and uh, alice wahome the lawyer i read that judgment with shock and disbelief that's my statement 
that I do not expect the judiciary to take the interest of a single litigant and with that interest of a single in, uh, litigant in the name of Okia Umtata against the entire public interest, public good regarding finance bill or finance law. In parliament, you have 349 members of parliament who are representatives of the public. Let's assume Okiam of Tata was representing a certain sector. And that sector is not very far from ODM because he's also a senator whose background and ticket is as a meal. It is not possible for those who believe in this government not to see something else other than what is black and white. And therefore, I would want to urge the judiciary, because it is seized of the matter, and we have worked in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a situation of we decided we will respect the judiciary because we have co been commanded by the constitution. The constitutional order requires the judiciary remains independent. But it must also, and, I, and this is a, a, a statement that lawyers repeat a lot, the judiciary does not give judgments in isolation, does not give judgments in a vacuum. It must be mindful and observant of the political environment of the national larger good and public interest. This is kama watu na viongozi wa Kenya kwanza tunaheshimu all the institutions of government. We respect the parliament where we serve, the executive and also the judiciary. That is why none of us can st uh, start anywhere and talk ill about our judiciary. We may disagree on many respects, but we respect them. Kwa sababu heshima ndio inatupeleka kwenye tuko kama Kenya ambayo iko united. But we also have a right to disagree. Even if we respect our judiciary, we still reserve our right to disagree with, that, with some of the things that get processed through our judiciary. Now, um, listening to that, there's some three takeaways from it. Um, they are trying to achieve some objective here. And one of the things that you dear do not want to hear is a discussion about um, the housing, the protest about the housing fund, the protest about that finance bill. And clearly, listening to um, Didi Nyoro and Alice Wahome, this, Didi Nyoro is the head of budget committee in the National Assembly. Alice Wahome is from the executive because he's a, he's a member of the cabinet, he's a cabinet secretary. So I do believe and I honestly believe that what they are saying is not on the individual capacity. You do know sometimes public servants try to make us believe they're giving their own opinions, but that is not it. They're actually speaking on behalf of power. So one thing I'm seeing here is, is an attempt to profile the judicial staff and the judges that give this and the litigants as pro as meal so that the whole thing tends to be us versus them. In fact, um, what I am actually seeing here, and you can also, um, I may also be wrong on this, but what I'm seeing here is a concerted effort to believe or rather to, to push judiciary, judiciary and the litigants as people or forces against UDA. You know, it has been a long script and we've been complaining here and even at when people are talking about the finance bill that anyone who is normally perceived as not against, as against UDA is, is seen as prize meal. But then, you know, trying to create uh, enemies around UDA so that they can draw back the, uh, the sympathy, not the sympathy, but then try to when you say that the, the judges, the litigants, and so are pro -Zimio, so they are against government, then you're simply trying to create an us versus them in the discussion and at, 
I, because I support UDA, I should not listen to this because they are against power. So that is the objective. And they are trying to profile. And you know, um, I listened to it. And uh, if you listen to what, what Alice Wahome is saying, is that it got shocked that the judges, the, 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 the judgment was really looking at the interest of the four, which is a lie. Uh, the four litigants and okay, Tato, which is a lie. When they're talking about the housing fund, it is not true that it's about these four fellows. It's not, it's not the interest of Okiom Tata. But it's true that whatever is being discussed, the content of that uh, case they are, they're taken to court affects all Kenyans. But that's what some people want to believe. Create that perception that it's a very um, self-centered case. Number two, um, the name calling is to divert attention from the discussion going on. Yes, I know that uh, there is a provision in law that is not allowed to discuss what is already in the court, but the jury is out. The discussion here is about, I just looked at um, the, the petition and I've seen uh, like 13 grounds. There is one on KRA, you know, I saw one on KRA, this finance bill, I saw that also in participation of the two houses, amongst others. So instead of this, they are trying to avoid a discussion because what, what Kia Mtata is saying in the public, the discussion they are bringing in public is, is it true that the National Assembly did not, the Assembly Speaker did not consult with the Senate while it affects the County Assembly? Those are the questions. Is it true about um, what is the stake? What is the take about uh, the, the housing fund, the architecture, or how it's going to eat into the people's pockets? and constitutionality of the housing fund, I think that's it. But they don't want to get into that discussion because that's not a discussion they can win. And they know very well that the bill went against the people's will. So it's now diverted to name calling and just to try to draw people's attention. Number three, now, um, <coughs> the breaks could have been preempted and uh, they could be just doing reverse psychology. Maybe this case was hijacked by the state to offer the breaks so that it can be a reprieve or it can be a ground to subdue the opposition. You know, a protest that is planned, the anti law the sub sub protest that is planned. So when the court suspends it, uh, those who are planning to protest will be asked, why are you protesting? And even the courts have suspended it. Or, better still, they will be like, you know, the whole protest is normally pegged. The, the pro-government team pegs it as if that it's people protesting because they're against power. So the whole discussion will be centered around it. That we obey the law, even ourselves, we had our first budget, but the court stopped it, but it didn't protest. So why are you against protesting? So this is something that uh, I looked at it as if the, the UDA, the state team, seems to be taking it to a discussion about name calling and profiling the litigants and it is a ploy to dodge the contents thank you and let's meet in the next podcast